Well, I did have, I did plan to have this video up sooner than right now, but with my time constraints on this computer, it's sometimes it's hard to do these like when I really want to. I actually wanted to get, I wanted to have this up last night, but that didn't happen either. But anyway, I'm gonna jump right into my impact review for February seventh, two thousand thirteen. Show starts again from Manchester, England. You got Aces and Eights, aka the Mid Card Mafia, coming down to the ring. And let's just take a look at this group for a minute. All right, you got Devon, you got Mr. Anderson, you got Doc, you got Mike Knox, you got Taz, and you got the two newest members, Garrett Bischoff and Wes Briscoe. So Devon's talking a little bit about this and that, you know. I didn't really get a lot of it, but finally he gets around to introducing Garrett Bischoff. Who, who he just got that smug little look on his face. Kinda, kinda like his old man. Although he's... Although Garrett Bischoff to me should not have a live mic, I'm just saying. I mean, he, he can't talk like his old man to, can. And talk, talks about how uh, I don't even care what he talked about because it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. But then Wes Brusco starts talking, and he he blames Hulk Hogan for him being in into the Aces and Eights mid mid card mafia because he says because he's a Brusco he doesn't deserve to start right at the bottom. And for two years he he didn't answer his phone calls, so so I. I can kind of get Brusco's point about that. I mean, he is the son of a former of a WWE Hall of Famer, not a former Hall of Famer. So, but I just I just have a problem taking this group seriously. I just really cannot. So, that's that's basically what this opening segment did. Not a whole lot. All right. So, first actual match we had on the card was was the triple threat for the X Division title. Kenny King versus Zima Ion versus RVD. Um, not much to really say about this match. I, I, I really hope that Kenny King does get the title at some point, but but hey, we're in England. It's, it's just like in the US. It's like, no job Rob, he defends the title. Well, at least Kenny King didn't do the job of Zima Ion, so. I guess. Okay, then they had this British boot camp that TNA held up over when they were in the UK. It came down to three finalists. There was Rockstar Spud, there was the Bossom Twins, and Party Hardy. I guess, who knows, maybe he's a distant relative of Matt and Jeff Hardy, I don't know, but. Anyway, Rockstar Spud ended up winning the competition, which means he gets a contract on the TNA roster, so hopefully they'll do something with that. But Robbie and Robbie T ended up coming out of the ring and Robbie T was ba basically talking shit and basically hiding behind Robbie Robbie T. You know, just say, saying, hey, if Robbie T will do whatever I tell him to do. And it's like, and it's like, you know, the, the segment seemed to be more about Robbie and Robbie T and their Dissension, I guess it was, or were, I mean, and not not so much about Rockstar Spud. So maybe we're gonna get a match between Robbie and Robbie T at Lockdown. Who knows? But Robbie T started doing his little dance at the at the end of the segment with and Rockstar Spud in there. So hey, you never know. You, we might get, maybe we will get a match between those two at lockdown. I'd like to see it. And, and speaking of other people that shouldn't have a live mic, how about Jesse Goddard? He, he's got some lame ass promo about, about the British. And so, what does that do? It brings out the Cowboy James Storm. Boy, this is a. Storm basically said what he was going to do in his. He's gonna kick the crap out of him, and that's basically what he did. This match was a borderline squash. You know, 
Kind of like what I said last week, I don't know what, I still don't think that TNA, no, TNA knows what they're really doing to James Storm right now. If they're trying to make us not care about him anymore, well, they're starting to do a pretty good job. All right, the highlight of the show for me, the TNA World Tag Team Championship. The champions, Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez against Robert Roode and the greatest man who ever lived, Austin Aries. And oh my God, thank you very much. You've done something right, TNA. And you've put the straps on Bobby Roode and Austin Aries. Oh, this is awesome. This, to me, brings instant credibility back to the tag team division. And you know what? If they're going to have their first feud, hell, have it be against Kazarian and Daniels. Bad influence. Oh my god, could you, could you imagine the promos between these two teams? Oh, baby, this would be great. So then you had a knockout match between Terra and Tessmacher, the former knockout tag team champions. Oh, there was a there's a couple good segments to this. I mean, I mean, oh god, Tessmacher did the Bronco Buster on Terra. That's that's a good start. And then she did like I guess the Tess Muffer. I guess you could call it. I mean, she got she got the Bronco Buster. Terry got the Bronco Buster and the and the Test Muffer. <laughs> oh, well, Jesse was barred from ringside, so Test Marker wins a non-title match. So hopefully, maybe she'll get another return title match in the near future. So we can only hope so. If we even if we're gonna see more of that stuff, I'm all for it. All right, so we had the main event tables match that was announced last week by Hulk Hogan, brother. Uh, is Devon and Doc against the Stinger and Bully Ray? And God, I mean, th this was a decent match, I guess. It was passable, I suppose. So, but Hulk Hogan wanted Bully Ray to prove that he was part of the family. So, well, uh, fin uh, finish of this. Bully Ray puts. Devon through the table. Game over. E even even with the attempted interference by Mike Knox, it's, it still didn't stop the Stinger and Bully Ray. So, n n nice way to make the mid-card Mafia even more like a bunch of jobbers. Because that's really what they seem right, like right now. I, think, I still think it's going to be funny to see who, who this higher power really is. I mean, I guess it's probably going to be like an Eric Bischoff or maybe the founder, Jeff fucking Jarrett, that that Memphis mid-card piece of cr monkey crap. I mean, th those would be probably the two obvious choices. Maybe, uh, if you're thinking outside the box, maybe, maybe Bully Ray's been in the tank for eights and eights all along. Who knows? But as far... For, as far as this go, this ace and ace crap goes, it's it's really got to stop. I mean, he, and another thing about about the ace and eights and and, and having t Taz on commentary, it's like what I know Schlag Daddy allu alluded to this on his review this week, and I'm just gonna piggyback off that. It's, it's like why don't people go after him? Why, why, why don't, why, why doesn't, like, a Bully Ray or somebody go after him? Because he's Teflon Taz? Because if somebody touches him, he's gonna, he's gonna own the freaking joint, like he said? It's like, it's, that's, that's a load of crap. You, th you think, because Taz is right, he's right out there in plain view in the, in the broadcast booth. Yeah, you think somebody would go after him, you know? Uh, that's I don't get that I'll tell you that much final thoughts on this show is, is that uh, it wasn't their greatest show by by any stretch of the imagination but but it had good parts obviously the the highlight for me was 
Aries and Rude won the tag team titles from Chavo and Hernandez. And that is a great thing, TNA. Once again, I applaud you. Because with Aries and Rude as your tag team champions, this brings back instant credibility to the tag team titles or and to the tag team division itself. Because you know that Aries and Rude are going to be on television every week. Maybe the, maybe the titles aren't going to get defended every week, but you know you're going to see them every week. So I, that's a very big positive. And the fact that their 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 characters don't they don't really get along. They do, but they don't. They they seem to have gotten together for a common goal. It's kind of to me. It kind of reminds me of Kane and Daniel Bryan in WWE because they don't really get along either. They're dysfunctional. So, <clears throat> and then with, well, if we get to see Terran Tessmacher again, that would be awesome. I mean, that granted, it wasn't the best match they've ever, they've ever had but this week, but but maybe, maybe they're going to do it all again at lockdown here in another month. But, and as far as aces and eights go, oh, God, I hope this ends. I'd, I hope this thing ends at lockdown. Hopefully in a lethal lockdown match will be more than likely be the main event of the show. But please let it be over. And and another thing. Why can't it just be Todd Kennelly and Jeremy Borash on commentary? I'm just saying. Yeah, you, you can call me out for agreeing with what Jeff said and that and this and that, but but I didn't like Tanae when he was in WCW, and <clears throat> and Taz is not—he's not a good announcer. I—I I mean, granted, he—they—they they did need a like a heel presence in the announcing booth, but Taz just isn't that good. And he's the Barney Rubble of professional wrestling. Okay. So, anyway, I'm out for now, and talk to you later. Bye.